students, let us see what is there in this question now. The secondary coil of an alternating current transform, transformer is connected to two diodes as shown. And this is the way they are connected. Okay, fine. Which graph shows the variation of the time, uh, with the time of the potential difference VXY between X and Y? So you basically want to comment on the potential difference between the two points X and Y. And uh, here is the input signal. So my dear students, first of all, the topic is from the topic. The question is from the topic of diode. And in the diode, we were doing rectifier. We have done it uh, in the theory. So this uh, question belongs to rectifier. And this diagram is actually not given in your book. But this is actually the real full wave rectifier. And that theory is not given in the book. Ironically, the other uh, full wave rectifier is given that star formation that is given there but this rectifier is not given so uh, instead of drawing all of those things because that would be con uh, consuming a lot of time uh, i'm going to show you my own notes now so these are my notes and um, like these are the notes which i have created for the indian students for indian syllabus but a couple of topics are the same so we can read this also so first of all try to understand what is rectification process so rectification process is when there is an alternating current we want to convert it into the direct current. What is an alternating current? Alternating current is when there is a, um, a positive current and then there is a negative current. So the magnitude is definitely a variable, but direction is also variable. So once the current is moving towards right hand side and then it is going to left hand side. But in direct current, the magnitude may vary, like may vary, like it would be higher, it would be lower, but it is never going to become negative. It is always positive, even then we are going to take this as a direct current. So this is an attempt to convert the alternating current into the direct current because there are many devices which do not work on alternating current. For example, if you want to charge a battery, so battery cannot be charged with the help of alternating current. It has to have a direct current, otherwise the battery will not be charged. So that is why we need to create these kind of devices. So there are two devices which are currently in our syllabus. The first one is half wave rectifier and the second one is the full wave rectifier. So first of all, let me explain you what this half wave rectifier is. And here you see um, in this, this is the input signal. I would be very quick. Later, you can just pause the video and read all of the theory that is given here. No doubt about that. Now, this is the symbol of a transformer. This is how we show a transformer. Okay, like these are the, this is primary winding. This is secondary winding. This is how we show it. Now, this is positive terminal, negative terminal. I would be telling you that. Now, this is the input signal. For half of the cycle, this is positive and this is negative. Similarly, for that cycle, the secondary winding will also be having this positive and this negative. And there is this diode. There is only one diode here, D1, and there is no other diode. And directly, this wire is connected with the load. So your book is taking this point as X and this point as Y, but I have shown a bulb there because it is it makes more sense. It becomes more comprehensible. Students can understand what is happening there. Okay. So if the current is flowing through it, the bulb is glowing. So we want to find when the bulb is glowing. So clearly in the positive half cycle, when this is positive here and this is negative here, this diode is kind of forward biased. This condition is known as forward bias, but I know that this is not given in your books. So you people will not be knowing about this. So it is good if you know it. This is the diode. And if the current is trying to flow in the same direction, which is allowed by the diode, it is known as forward bias. So here A is at a higher potential and B is connected at a lower potential. So this side is lower. So the current would be moving in this direction. So this direction is allowed. So there is forward bias and current is passing through it bulb is glowing. So the output is seen here. But what happens in the second half of this? You see, this is the second half when this is negative. Now, if this is negative, so this will become negative. This will become positive. So this is positive. This is negative. So A is negative and B is positive. So it means that current will move in the opposite direction now from positive to negative. But the diode is a one way gate. So diode does not allow the current to move in the opposite direction. And that is why this current is not allowed to move. And thereby the bulb does not glow because there is no current. So for half of the cycle, there is no current. For half of the first cycle, there is a current. So this is a current here. But in the next half, there is no current. 
It means half of the wave has been rectified, but other half is not rectified, and hence the name half wave rectified. So this is what is half wave rectified. This is how we draw it. Now, so theory, I am not reading that theory. You can just pause the video later and you can read the theory if you want. This is the full wave rectifier and exactly this is what is has, has been asked in the question. Uh, so let me explain you what is happening here, you see. This is the alternating current and this is the input here. Again, this is the transformer here and uh, this is D1 diode. This is D2 diode and this is these are the point X and Y. This is the load resistance, which you may or may not connect. If you are not connecting, there will be a potential difference between X and Y. If you are connecting them, there will be a current that will try to pass through it. Simple. So it's easy to understand if you are connecting it with the load resistor. Earlier, I was connecting a bulb there. So you can also connect a bulb here now. So now what happens? Let us concentrate on the first half cycle. So first half cycle, this is positive. So this end is positive. This end is negative. In between, we can just assume it to be a zero or in between that potential. So definitely, as per D1 is concerned, the current will try to move from this. Like this is at a higher potential. And because this is connected at lower, so X is at lower potential. Definitely, current will try to move through the diode in allowed direction. So current is allowed now to move. And so current is moving through this like this. But D2 is reverse biased. Why? Because this is at lower and this is like a bit more positive, a bit more positive because this end is connected here. So it is a bit more positive comparatively. So D2 is reverse biased and so no current will pass through it. But this is forward biased and current will pass through D1. So the bulb will glow. And that is why we are having this half which is glowing here. This half which is glowing here. So we have the output for the first half cycle. Now let us concentrate on the second half cycle here in this diagram. Clearly, this is now negative. This is now positive. So this is negative and this is positive. Now B becomes more positive. A becomes negative and this becomes kind of zero or in between positive and negative. So this point is a bit more positive when you compare it with this. So current wants to move in this direction, but this is not allowed. So this is reverse biased. D1 is not passing any current, but D2 is passing current. Now you see current is passing like this because this is at the highest potential. This is at a bit lower potential. So current is allowed to pass through D2. So current will pass like this, like this and like this. So even now the load resistance is happy because current is passing through it. So if you have a bulb attached there, so that bulb will be glowing there. So I can say that, yeah, even this is glowing and even this is there. So in this kind of uh, input, when half is positive and half is negative, we are having both positive outputs. So we have very fairly converted alternating current into a DC current. Direct current means that the direction is now not changing. So this is the direct current. So this is a full wave rectifier, my dear students, I believe the theory should be very clear. I have actually uh, exploited this opportunity to explain you the whole of the theory for this question. And you can later, later on, we will not be facing any problem. No? Okay, so this is how the full wave rectifier works. But there is another kind of full wave rectifier combination, which is star combination. But that combination is not shown here in my notes. This is what we study in India. So that uh, is actually uh, asked in questions, but not in the theory. So let me show you that. So that diode is, it, it looks somewhat like this. Yeah, we connecting, uh, not a battery, but alternating source like this. And there are this kind of a diode is there. And then this diode is there. This is how the diodes look like. So I would be taking one minute more to explain you this. And after that, we can move to uh, the, uh, the question. You see, when this is positive and this is negative, the current will move like this. So the load resistance is that the current is going downwards and it's happy. 
And if I take the other way, like this is not positive and negative, let us say this is negative and this is positive. So current will move like this. And then this is, this is not allowing. So current will go up again. The current is going down again. It goes like this and it comes back. So in both of the cases, the load resistance is happy that current is able to pass through it. And so in this also the AC current is converted into DC current. So this is how this junction work. This is given in the book so course and this is given in your books. So you people can understand this quite easy, I believe. So we would be discussing this thing in any other uh, question if they would be asking because it's already 11 minutes really that I have taken. So let us now move to move back to the question. Yeah, here. So what is happening here, you see now clearly that the formation shown here is the formation of a full wave rectifier. Now, this is a full wave rectifier. Clearly, I have explained you that thing from my notes. Obviously, A option is absolutely correct and all other options are wrong. Isn't it? Because we know that it is a full wave rectifier. And so in both of the half cycles, you would be getting positive current. And hence, A is the correct answer. My dear students, I've taken a lot of time for this question, by the way, but I hope you won't mind it. Anyways, all the best. Bye.